In this video, I am going to discuss about cognitive information processing theories and its classroom implications. Before we talk about information processing theory, let us have a look at information processing. Information processing stands for an act of processing the information, that is, to analyze, employ, or to make use of information for gaining in some knowledge or experience. In the words of Joyce and Whale, information processing refers to the ways people handle the stimuli from the environment, organize data, sense problems, generate concepts and solutions to the problem, and employ verbal and non-verbal symbols. In this way, information processing deals with the way and means of an information. It is handled by an individual for deriving desired meaning for its further use. Consequently, the handling of processing of information may help an individual in gaining new experiences and insights for the solution of felt problems or modification of his ways of behaving. Information Processing Theories The way people process the available information may give birth to significant theories of learning. This very assumption has led to the formulation and establishment of some well-known theories termed as Information Processing Theories of Learning. The key question answered by all of these information processing theories of learning is cognitively what processes are occurring in the person's brain when they are presented with learning situation. Consequently, they throw light on the mechanism how the human brain senses, processes and recalls information. The working of our brain in terms of information processing may be easily equated to the work of the computers. Like computers, the information processing in the human brain may find its expression in mechanism of input, processing and output. According to the information processing theories of learning, Atkinson's and Sufficient Structure Model, George Miller's Information Processing Model, Allen Piver's Dual Coding Model are coming under this category. They believe learners as an active processor of information gathers. Atkins and Ashwin's Structural Theory Model this theory is the outcome of the ideas propagated by Atkinson and Sheffield. According to this theory, learning is the outcome of processing of information carried out by human brain at the very following three stages, sensory register, short time memory and long time memory. According to this theory, information passes from store to store in a linear way, like a computer, with an input process and output. Information is detected by the sense organs and enters into the sensory memory if it is attuned to the information entered to the short term and it is transferred to the long term memory. Only if that information is regressed or repeated. If maintenance regression does not occur, then the information is forget and lost from short term memory through the process of displacement and decay. The information unprocessed at the short term memory stage is then transferred to the long term memory is believed to have ultimate capacity of duration. It is used for storing and processing of sensory information on the permanent basis. The stored as well as organized information in the long term memory is a coded form of transferred back to the short term memory, where it is decoded and employed for the response of the desired and are ordered by our brain. George Miller's Information Processing Theory This theory has put forward by George A. Miller as an extension of the earlier approaches of the cognitive psychologist expressing learning primarily in terms of the study of the process of memorization. The main ideas behind this theory may be summarized as below. Information processing helps in acquiring new experience and learning new ways of behaving. Students learn better when they are actively processing, storing and retrieving information. Students learn better when they are actively processing, storing and retrieving information and involves is encoding, retention and retrieval. Like a computer, human mind takes information, processes the operation and to it changes its forms and content stores and locates it, generate response to it. Meaningful encoding is essential for the desired task of the information processing. Miller has given some of the useful concepts. How much a information people can remember? According to him, 7 plus or minus 2. The next useful concept emphasis in Miller information processes is a theory known as TOTE, 
test operate test exists as a basic unit of behavior. Miller suggested it should replace the stimulus response mechanism as a basic unit of behavior. Because if the goal is tested to see if it is being achieved through the mechanism of information processing. If not, an operation is performed to achieve the goal until eventually achieved or abandoned. By adapting this technique, an individual may be capable of finding the solution of his problem or learning the desired way of achieving his goal. The next useful concept introduced by Miller is chunking. According to that, chunking for meaningful organization, encoding of the subject matter at the all the levels of coordination processing. Classical examples of chunks is the ability of remember the long sequence in the Bramley numbers. Alan Pivot's dual coding theory. This theory has been proposed by A. Pivot as an attempt to give equal weightage in the processing of verbal and non-verbal information in the task of learning. On account of its emphasis on dual functionality of the verbal and non-verbal information, the theory has been named as dual coding theory. Initiating his theory, Pivot writes, human cognition is in EQ in that it became specialized for dealing simultaneously with the language and with non-verbal objects and events. He also postlists two different types of referential units. One is images, mental images and logins as a verbal entities. It is equal to the chunk. Dual coding theory identifies representational referential and associative types of processing require any or all these to complete any task. According to this theory, there are three types of processing, namely representational, referential, and associative. Representational information processing, there remains a direct activation of verbal and non-verbal representation. In referential information processing, there remains an activation of verbal system by non-verbal system or vice versa. In associative information processing, there remains an activity of representation within the same verbal and non-verbal system. Education implications of cognitive information processing theories. The information should be organized in terms of meaningful units for its better processing and fruitful learning outcome. Students should be held on the most important details and separating less vital information. Students should be held in making connection between new information and what they have already known. As far as adequate and possible, students should be provided for repetition and review of information. The learning material experiences should be organized in a clear, systematic and organized way for effective learning. We must always focus on the meaning and not on the memorization of information on any apart from the students. Students may con complete the students may consider the given reference for further studies. Thank you.